So this is uh, video four for chapter nine, where we're going to talk about the volume of prisms. And it does go with section 9.4 in your book. So if you're looking at the online textbook at all, uh, you can find more information there. So in this section, we're going to find the volume of rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, and other right prisms. So we'll look at pictures of those. Um, we've already learned a lot about prisms when we talked about surface area, but now we're going to find the volume. Okay, so let's write down what volume is. Volume is, and you can copy this down, pause if you need more time to keep up, but volume is the space inside of a 3D figure, right? So think of like a box or a can or a tank, um, anything that can hold something. Right? So think about filling it up or how much can you fit inside of a 3D figure or a 3D object. Okay, So now <clears throat> we measure volume with cubes. Right, So our units are going to be a cubic centimeter, a cubic inch, a cubic foot, a cubic yard. So think about a cube that's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, a little cube. Right, How many of those would it take to fill something? or one inch by one inch by one inch, a little square. How many of those could you fit inside, okay? This one is one that we actually use, like if you order um, mulch or dirt or uh, wood chips or gravel, that might come as a cubic yard, right? One cube by one cube by one cube in a big square. So that's think of those units when we are talking about volume. So here's a couple examples to write down. Examples of volume. Right? It could be how much space is in your locker, or how much does your fish tank hold, or how big is your gas tank, how big is your refrigerator, right? Anything that you can fill has a volume. So you need to write two more of your own examples. Anything that you can fill up, right, or that, ha that takes up space that's three-dimensional would have a volume. Okay, so write your two examples there. All right, so let's review the formula for volume, which you've probably learned in previous grades uh, for a rectangular prism, right? So let's come over here to this picture. And if I'm just counting how many cubes it takes to fill this, well, I can see clearly here, this is three by two, and I can see that there are six cubes there, right? So it's just one layer, six cubes, okay? Well, now if I stack it up and it's three, by two by two, I have six on this bottom layer, six more on this top layer, I would get 12 total cubes, right, for the volume of this one. All right, well, let's keep going. Now if I make it three by two and it's three layers high, so this would be six, 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 I'd get 18 cubes here, right? Or three by two, it's still six on each layer, but now if I have four layers, that would be 24. Or if the bottom layer is six and I have five layers, this would give me 30 cubes, okay? So we know that we can find the area of the base, right? If I call this the base layer here, and then I would just multiply it by however many layers tall I am, right? Or in other words, multiply that by the height to get a total number of cubes, okay? So that's where we get the formula that you've probably heard before, right? length times width, that gives you how many are on this base layer, and then just multiply it by the height. Multiply it by how many layers you have, okay? So we've all heard length times width times height is the volume of any rectangular prism, any box shape like this, okay? But we can use that same idea to get the volume of any prism, right? All prisms. Okay. So if I think about this length times width as just the volume of whatever the base shape is and multiply that area of the base shape times the height, that will give me the volume for any prism. And it doesn't have to be a rectangle anymore. Okay. So now we say capital B, and that's the area of the base times the height. Okay. Okay, so let's build on that, right? Area of the base times the height. So let's look at all of these shapes. These are all prisms, right? They might be going different directions, but these are these are all right prisms, okay? So if I have <clears throat> like a triangle for the base, 
Here would be my base, and if I find capital B for the area of that, I would just multiply it by the height. I'm going to change to a marker here so you can see better. Okay, multiply it by the height. So here's the base of this one, and then once I find that area, I'd multiply it by this height. Okay, so do this with me. We're just shading in whatever the base shape is, and then when you find that area, you would multiply it by this height. Find whatever the base shape is. Multiply it by this height. Base shape. Multiply that area times the height. Base. Multiply it by this height. Okay? All right. So now it doesn't matter what kind of prism we have. We should be able to find the volume. So I'm going to write my formula one more time. The volume for any shape is the area of the base times the height. So let's do this example here. Well, I know the base shape down here that it's sitting on would be 5 times 4. So for this one, I know the area of the base is 20, and I would multiply that here by the height, and I'd get a volume of 60 inches, and it's cubic inches now because we're talking about volume. Okay? So think back to what we would have done in elementary school, 3 times 5 times 4, and you'll get the same answer. Right? So length times width times height still works, but we're going to think of it as the area of the base times the height. Okay, so let's flip it over and do a few more. I want to see this formula written down every time, area of the base times the height. Okay, and we're going to shade in the base. So 4 times 4 is 16 for that square base times the height of 4. And I get 64 and cubic units, so cubic feet. Okay, so go ahead and do these. Make sure you write the formula down and then also get your answer. Pause and then we'll come back and check these two. Okay, so for each of these I started with the formula. Just write this down every time. Then let's find the area of the base. Well, the base that it's sitting on is an area of 48 and then multiply it by the height, so times 15. And then make sure you have units on your answer. Same thing here, area of the base, 8 times 5, so there are 40 cubes on this base layer, and then I would multiply it by 5 for each layer, and I got this. Okay, so let's try one now that is a triangular prism. Well, now we know that the uh, base is just a triangle, so let's start with this one. Here I have my triangular base, so i got to find the area of that. So I like to just kind of say, okay, let's look at the triangle first. Well, uh, here's a base and a height of the triangle. Base times height divided by 2 for my triangle, right? So 10 times 12 and then divided by 2, and I get 60. So this base is 60, and then I'm going to multiply it by my height. So 60 times a height of 16 and I get an answer of 960 uh, meters cube. Okay, I'll do one more and then you can have two to practice with. So let's do this one over here. Here's my base triangle, right? So to find the area of that, I would be doing four times six divided by two. Well, I know four times six is 24 divided by two, okay? So now my volume, capital B times H. Well, the area of my base was 12 times, it looks like a height of five, and I get a volume here of 60. And meters, millimeters cubed, okay? All right, so there are two more triangular prisms here for you to try. So think about, find your base shape, right? Find the area of that base, capital B, and then multiply by the height. So do both of these right now. Pause and work these out and then uh, play to check when you're ready. Okay, so for in this one, I looked at my triangle here. I did base times height divided by two and got that the area of the base, right, for the triangle was 5.5. So then here's my volume formula. Plug in area of the base times a height now of four, and I got this. And then looking at this one, again, I did base times height divided by 2 for the triangle. I got that for capital B, the area of that base. 
and then times a height of 47, and I got this answer. Okay? All right. So we've got three more down here. What if we're asked to find the volume of a different prism, right? Anything else. Okay, well, I can see here that I have a pentagon for a base, or what is this? An uh, one, two, three, four, an octagon for a base, or a trapezoid for a base, right? So I can still find the volume of these. Let's see. If I just write down that volume is equal to capital B times H, well, they're giving me the area of this base. They're telling me capital B is 60. So all I have to do is 60 times the height of 5, and I'll have my answer. So I just need to put units on it, cubic feet. Okay. Same thing with this one. If I know volume is equal to capital B times H, they're telling me area of the base here is 80 times the height, which is 11, and I get that the volume is 880 uh, meters cubed. Okay, what about this one? We know how to find the area of a trapezoid. Okay, if you think back to the beginning of chapter eight, was it? Um, we know how to find the area here, so that I'm gonna put capital B for the area of this base. For a trapezoid is little b plus b divided by two times the height of that trapezoid. Okay, so little b, Right, I have two bases for my trapezoid, 8 and 14, divided by 2. And then I'm going to multiply that by the height of my trapezoid. So it's just a matter of kind of keeping things straight here. The height of my trapezoid is 4. So if you work this out, I get that this base, this trapezoid, right? this would be 11, divide, or sorry, 22 divided by 2 is 11. 11 times 4 is 44. So that's my capital B, that's the area of this base trapezoid. And then I just need to multiply it by the height. So 44 times the height of 10. Okay, so after this, we should be able to find the volume of any right prism, as long as I either know how to calculate the area of the base shape, or maybe they just tell me the area of the base shape. But for all of our prisms, it's really just going to come back to capital B times H. Okay? So there's your video notes for 9.4.